transformation by light. Transformation by light. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 5. It says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. We're also going to look at uh, John to verse 14 of St. Genesis chapter 1. It says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater lights to rule the day and the lesser lights to rule the night. He made the stars also, verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that he was good. Hallelujah. Amen. Here, we see that, you know, God began creation and the Bible says that the earth was without form and void. And then it says darkness was upon the face of the deep. Bringing that into reality is that there is darkness all over the land. And it is not something that is strange that you know there is darkness all over the earth. Men are in darkness and Darkness could mean different things. It could mean that, you know, people are in distress, people are discouraged, people are, are feeling down. And that was a situation also, you know, that God, you know, encountered at the beginning of creation. The says the earth was without form and void. There was nothing beauty or beautiful to behold about the earth. There, is, there was nothing beautiful to behold, you know, about the earth. And Bible says darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the first thing God said was that what let there be light. So the cure to darkness is light. That which seems like darkness around you is there because there's no sufficient light. The cure to darkness is light. It says darkness is prevalent where there is no light. So it could be that the reason why you are where you are is because you do not have sufficient light of yourself or in yourself. You do not have sufficient light in order to be able to break through you know, out of that which seems like darkness around your life. And it says the earth was without form and void. It was without shape, it was without order. If you look into your life, look into you know the things that you you know have put in place you know to achieve you know or to become your life in itself may not look like it. That is why it says the earth was without form and void, no shape, no order. It was empty. But God had a picture in mind of that which He wanted to do. And then He said, "What well, let there be light." And so, light was, you know, the platform for which you know the world was created. Light becomes the platform you know, for creation. 
So if you want to create the things you know, that you want to see within the confines of your life, you need light. And then in verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So light is that which divides. Light is that you know, which separates men from men. People who seem like they are winning, people who seem like you know their life is going in the direction where they want it to be. It is because they have sufficient light for that journey. So what separates men from men, you know, what separates people you know, who are doing well from people who are not doing well is light. It says, let the light you know, divide the day from the night. Let the light divide you know, those you know, who will be on the path of progress and success from those who will be on the path you know, of failure. So light is very important. And that is why God wants us to see you know, transformation by light. Transformation can only happen by light. Light is that which reveals. Light is that which makes manifest according to scripture. It says, let it divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Verse 16, we're going to come back to verse 14, the later part. In the verse 16 says, And God made two great light, the greater light to rule. Light is also that which rules, which gives men, you know, the ground for ruling. If you want to rule in your world, if you want to rule in your community, if you want to rule, you know, within the sphere of influence that God has placed you, you need sufficient light. He says, let the greater light rule. There's rulership with light. So if you want to rule your world, if you want to rule your environment, if you want to rule you know, that place that God has placed you, you need what? You need sufficient light. The last time we talked about, you know, understanding the will of God in you know, our lives. You need to come into light of that which God, you know, has bestowed upon you. It is not just sufficient to know it, you know, in your head. Do you have sufficient light for the journey? And then verse 14, it says, And let them be for signs and for seasons. Our lives are patterned, you know, after seasons. And so for each season to break forth, you need light. For each season to break forth, you need light. For you to step into the next season of your life, you need light. You need light. You need light within yourself. You need light for the journey. The Bible talks about, you know, the parable of the virgins. And they say some were foolish, some were wise. And the Bible says that you know, those who were wise had sufficient oil you know, for their lamps. And the ones who were foolish did not have you know, sufficient oil for their lamps. So for us to be wise, we need light. We need light. For us to step into the next season of our lives, you know, we need light. That season that looks like, you know, darkness is everywhere. That darkness can only go when light comes. That darkness, you know, can only go, you know, when light comes. So the question I need to ask yourself this morning, do I have sufficient light within myself? Do I have enough light within myself? Do I have enough illumination within myself? Or you are allowing the darkness you know, to bear rule. Darkness only has power where there is no light. The moment light comes, darkness disappears. So darkness itself is not really a reality. It's just a mirage. Because when the true reality, which is light, comes, you can't find darkness again. So darkness will only try you know, where there is absence of light. 
So we need light alone within ourselves. You know, light is that which is good. Light precedes development. So for us to develop, for us to grow, you know, for us to see the things we need to see, or God wants us to see, you know, we need light. We need light. We need to come, you know, to the reality of light. We need to come, you know, to the reality of light. Since the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, God did not run back and say, oh, there was darkness. No. He saw the darkness, you know, and he confronted it because that was not the reality that he wanted to see. What he wanted to see you know, but things that, you know, he would bring into existence, which are good things. But the darkness was, you know, standing like an obstruction to that which is supposed to be good, to be made manifest. So you can see that the reason why, you know, many of us are where we are for many years is because we do not have sufficient light to take us to the next season of our lives. We need light, sufficient light. Because if the whole place is dark, and then you switch on, you know, a touch light, the intensity of the light, you know, will not make so much impact, you know, as when you switch on, you know, a bigger bulb. So you see that lights are also in levels, these lights are also in categories. So the light you use. You know, for this situation or this challenge may not be sufficient, you know, for the next issue to be solved. So for every challenge, every situation, every place you step into, you need light. You need a greater measure of light depending on the you know the degree of darkness. Depending on the degree, you know, of darkness. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 16. Isaiah chapter 16. Isaiah chapter 16, from verse 1 to 3. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He says, But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. He says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the verse three says, And Gentiles shall come to what? To thy light. Gentiles will not come to anything but what? Your light. And in verse 1, it says, Arise and shine. It says, For your light has come. It says, And kings to the brightness of the rising. Kings don't just come to anybody, they come to men of light. Kings don't just come to men, men. they come to men of light. It says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. So we must have light. We must arise. We must take enough light, you know, for the journey. Life is a journey. The Christian race also is a journey. How much light do you have within yourself? Because the devil will come to check. The devil will come to check how much light do you have. He will present situations, he will present you know, circumstances, you know, to cover you with darkness. But you see, it is men who have light that will arise and shine in the midst of that darkness. He says, For behold, it's an assurance that darkness will cover the earth. He says, And gross darkness the people. Darkness and gross darkness. So darkness will always be there. So long as there's an absence of light, 
there will be darkness. So the reason why we are seeing so much darkness all around the land is because those who are light either do not have sufficient light within themselves or they are not shining forth the light that they have you know, within themselves. Says, Gentiles shall come to thy light. Gentiles shall come to thy light. Men will only come to you when you have light. Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. So we are not just you know, ordinary people. As believers, we are not just ordinary people. We are men who carry something. And that is the light of God. And so we must arise. In the face of darkness, we must arise to shine. Because our light has come. It's not your light will come. It has come already. It says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So it's a reality that your light has come. It's a reality that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We are men of glory. We are men of light. We are supposed to rule. We are supposed to give leadership to the world and not the world giving us leadership. Because the world in itself, you know, is in darkness. The whole earth is in darkness. And the Bible says the people gross darkness. So God picked us. God saved us to be light. God saved us, you know, to be light. And we must shine. We have been called to a place to shine. Every one of us as believers are expected to shine. We must shine. We must arise and we must shine because our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Is risen upon us. Having said this, very quickly, you know, we'll go into you know, how to have this light. How? Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. It says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. The entrance of thy words giveth light. So the first one we come into light is by the ministry of the word. The ministry of the word. Very important. This is the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So how much of the word of God do you have in you? How much of the word of God do you have in you? How much of the word of God do you have in you? Or you only just see the word as, you know, stories that have been written. Or you see the word as life. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And here the psalmist says, the entrance of thy words. So the word has to enter. The word has to enter for you to have life. The entrance of thy words. And the word is in plural. The entrance of thy words. So you don't just receive the word once and then you go about and say, oh, I have like, no. You have to stay with the word. There are people who, you know, they will make statements like, I cannot be sick again. I can never be poor. They are not just saying it because, you know, they like to say it. It's because they come into an understanding of that reality. So no matter what the devil brings to them against that reality, because they have light in that area, 
no form of darkness, you know, will find expression in their life as against that area. The entrance of thy word given light. We must stay with the word. We must stay with the word. Very, very important. We must sit down with the word. It is very difficult now, you know, to sit down with the word with a lot of distractions. There are so many distractions around taking us away, you know, from the word of God. You have social media, you know, people spend time, you know, watching movies and all of that. But we must create time, you know, to sit down with the word and see what the word of God says. You are challenged in the area, what does the word of God say about that situation? What does the word of God say about that thing? You know that you are going through. And that you have seen it in the world. Does it mean that you have light already of that thing or in that thing? You must stay until it opens up to you. You must stay in that place till it opens up to you. And then faith is built up. And then you begin to act on it. You must stay with the word. The entrance of thy words given light. And so there are three levels, you know, of, of knowing, or three levels of coming into this knowledge. And as regards, you know, the word. Number one is knowledge, you know, or information. Number two is understanding. Number three is revelation. There are three levels of knowing. Number one is information. Number two is understanding. Then number three is revelation. And so when you take the word, you see, these are three levels, you know, we go into when as regards, you know, the word. Number one is information. So you just speak the Bible and then you just read. You know, you just have information, you know, about what the word is saying. You know, and then you just enjoy reading the word. You may not really have so much understanding, but you just have information, you know, about what the word says. You know, maybe you just speak Genesis and then you just read, or oh, in the beginning, God created the heavens. You have the information in your head, you know. By the stripes of Jesus, you know, we are healed. You have that information in your head. That is the first level. So you must start with reading it. As I always tell you, just read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. I mean, so you read it. You just read it. And then you just have the information, you don't have the words in your head. You start from that level. And then the next level you go into it is the next is the level of understanding. It's the level of understanding. And so, in Ephesians, let me see. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 1 to verse 1 to 5 to 4. Excuse me. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. It says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. He says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. He says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So Paul is saying to the official church, I have the revelation. I have written it down. When you read, you will come into understanding. Do you understand? When you read 
this revelation that I have, you will now come into understanding. So, having gotten the information, that is why Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved, you know, unto God, and they uh, rightly dividing the word and all of that. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, you now begin to, you know, find understanding along a particular line. That is why when we say come to church, it is very important because when you come to church, the person who is preaching has revelation, has understanding, and is teaching you that which he has understood so that you too will come into that understanding. I don't even understand what I'm saying. So, God designed it that way. That is why he gave us teachers. He gave us pastors. He gave us prophets with the evangelists and apostles. Because just like the case of um, Philip and uh, the Utopia you know, he was reading it. The Utopia you know, was reading the scriptures. But he didn't have understanding. But he had information. He was reading the scriptures, but he didn't have understanding. God had to send Philip. Yes, Philip. God had to send Philip to him to give him understanding into that which he was reading. So just imagine God did not send Philip to the Utopia, you know. He would have just had information. He would have come into understanding. Do you are you following what I'm saying? So that you have information does not mean you have understanding. So you must come to a teacher or somebody who has understanding and learn so that you too you will come into the experience of that understanding. Then you have light. So people will say, you know, I can stay in my house, read the Bible and all of that. Well, I don't have so much to say to you, but there are certain understandings you can't come into if you don't come to church. God designed it that way. You can't have it. I don't know if that's happened to you, but sometimes, sometimes I have a question in my mind, and then when I come to church, I just have answers. At least I've expressed it at least more than once. Even in the service, sometimes you just think about something that you just come and then there's understanding. That is why they are teachers. That's why they are, you know, people God has put, you know, with a higher level of grace to be able to, you know, break the word down for you to understand. So just sitting in your house and then reading the Bible, which is good, you should have, you know, time for, you know, personal study and all of that. But you see, Within the structure that God has set up, there are certain understandings you can't come into unless somebody teaches you, you know, that thing, unless you have been taught. So we must seek, you know, to always avail ourselves, you know, when it's time, you know, for the word, when it's time for fellowship, when it's time for service. Because God designed it that way. That's why I said, the entrance of thy words. So whether it is how you are reading it by yourself, or you are sitting down on the nature of somebody and is teaching you, it gives light. It gives light. It says, by, by when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What was what that God revelation? Not the people. But when he wrote to death, he said, when you read, so there's a reading part, there's a coming to church part, there's a paying attention part, so that you would have understanding. You would have understanding. So don't just come to church, you know, don't just attend fellowship, don't just attend programs, you know, carelessly. There should be some, some attitude. I'm going to have understanding. 
I'm going to receive light. That is the attitude we should have. That's why you are teachers. That's why you went, that's why you went to school. If there were no teachers in school, just guy in general mathematics, they had to knock off. At least there was three people that went to general mathematics, not one person. That's their hand. That's why I have examples and I have exercises. So you follow the example to get to where the exercise. If you don't have you can also the exercise, go back to the example. That's why these things are there. You need to have what? Understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the next level is what? Revelation. Revelation. Revelation is it's a bit higher than understanding. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 15 to 15 to 19. Let's stop at 19. It says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Do you have faith in the Lord Jesus? Do you have love unto all the saints? We need to hear of them. Hallelujah. It says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17 is the prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Since the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Verse 17, it says that God may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So revelation is by what? A spirit. Revelation. Is by a spirit. That is why the Holy Ghost has been given unto us. And so you see, the Holy Ghost will not just jump you from information to revelation. The Holy Ghost only skip classes. So you must go from information to understanding, and then He comes to give you revelation. Are we following the analogy? So you don't just jump from information to revelation. No, you must pass through the class of what? Understanding to get to revelation. And revelation is by the Spirit of God. Revelation is, you know, that which opens up. So you might look at, you know, a scripture. You might be, might be reading the scripture before. I have understanding of it. And then the day comes and then just go to the scripture again and then it opens up to you. At that point, you know, it becomes your own. It becomes your own. So, we must stay with the word until revelation is born. Revelation. Revelation, you know, produces greater results. Understanding too produces results. But revelation produces greater results. And revelation is based on what? Understanding. And understanding is based on what? Information. Are you seeing that all of them are connected together? You can't remove anyone from it. You can't remove anyone from the equation. You must have 
the information. You must sit down with the word. You must, you know, come seek understanding. And then you must stay also. You know, have an understanding. You must go back. You must go back. So that you stir it until the Holy Ghost broods upon it. And then you have what? Revelation. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 to verse 6 to 12. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 to 12. It says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. It says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse 8, which none of the priests of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, uh, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, you can align it to be powerful. But God has what? Reveal them unto us by who? By the Spirit. It says, For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of the man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. It says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may what? Know the things that are freely given to us of God. Hallelujah. It says, but God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. So you must stay as why Paul prayed for the official church that God will give unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. That one is exclusive to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of wisdom and revelation. And it says that God has revealed you know, the wisdom that is in the mystery unto our glory. He said He has revealed them to us by His Spirit. So this is one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the things that have been ordained for our glory, those things that are hidden. Things that are hidden, don't just find them carelessly. Don't just find things that are hidden anyhow. I'm sure many of us still remember Buddha was saying such. There's a bear hidden somewhere and then they spend days Looking for it, and then if somebody finds it, I don't shout at the winner. That's how it is. You keep searching, you know. You keep you keep reading the word. You keep coming to church, and then one day it just opens up to you, and then it becomes a knowing something you know. It's just like my little niece. She has heard that name, but because I do not answer it. But the time comes when she now becomes aware that this is my name. This is what they call me. And then when, she, when you call her, she will now respond. That's how it is. You keep reading the word. You keep coming to church. Light is entering. Light is entering. One day, it explodes. And then you begin to walk in that reality. It didn't start the day that it exploded. It started the first time you took the word. I said, I want to sit down with the word. It started the day you know you began coming to church, hearing the word, paying attention, giving heed to the word. The Holy Ghost now says, Okay, this one is ready for revelation. 
Holy Ghost will not skip classes for you. He would not. You have to sit down with the word. You have to come to church to hear the word. That I said, I understood by books. He did not sit down and then he just appeared. No, he understood by books. So you must sit down with the word. He says, God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. He says, Hail. Verse 12. He says, Now we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know, or that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, you know, from verse 3, there are about you know, Paul was teaching the people, you know, and then he said, you know, that God has blessed them with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. They had information. They had, probably they had understanding. But they needed what? The revelation of it. He says, the eyes of the understanding being enlightened. We are not supposed to walk as men, men. We are supposed to walk as people of light. How much light do you have, you know, within yourself? As regarding the promises of God, how much light do you have? How much light do you have as regards the promises of God? How much light do you have? How much light do you have? So we must seek to, you know, to stay with the word. Stay on the word until what? Light comes. The entrance of thy word, you know, of thy words. Give it light and understanding to the simple. Understanding comes. Light also comes. Understanding comes and light also comes. You see that we may know the things that are freely given to us. There are things that have been freely given to us. Do you know them? Those are promises of God. Do you know them? Do you have understanding of them? And then do you have a revelation of it? Because that is the only way with which what we can rule. Since light is that which rules. Light, you know, has been given for seasons. Light. We must strive. We must strive for revelation. We must strive for understanding. We must strive. And then the next thing is what? Prayer. Prayer. Luke chapter 9. Verse 28 and 29. Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. It says, And it came to pass about an eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. Verse 29. The Bible says, What? As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. From this scripture, let us understand that you see, there is a place where men are made, and that is the place of prayer. It says he took them to a mountain top. So we need to come up here. 
the scripture we say, come up here. They remain at the ground level. He took them to a mountain top. And the Bible says what? As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistening. So we must pray. We must pray. Prayer. We must pray. We must have the word. We must have prayer. We must pray. The times are hard. There's darkness all over. We must pray. That's why the Bible says the Holy Ghost has been given to us to help our infirmities. It says the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. He said we do not know what we should pray for even as we ought. You don't know what you should pray for. You don't know how you should pray about it. And he says that the Holy Spirit helps. The Holy Spirit is very important. It was not given to us you know, to just come and chill. He came to help us. He says as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was taught that we must spend time to pray. We must spend time to pray. Take our time and pray. Somebody say, oh, I know how to pray for only 15 minutes. Try and increase it. Tell the Holy Spirit to help you to increase it. Even Jesus Christ came to the disciples and said, can't you people just wait for one hour? We appreciate that you are still in 15 minutes, 5 minutes, but at least try and get to one hour. And this is how we start with scripture. One hour, try and get there. Prayer is sweet. Prayer is sweet. That is why you know, we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. You just stand there, you start praying in tongues, you just help yourself, you know, create the atmosphere for lights to come in. Yeah. Don't just be, you know, anything goes. No, anything don't, does not go in this kingdom. We walk by prayer. We walk by light. Light comes, you know, by the word and prayer. Since he took them to a mountain top. So the journey to the mountain top is not an easy journey. You don't climb it, you don't climb it, you don't climb the mountain top and you are just smiling. It's a lot of work. In fact, you get to a certain height, I mean like now I cannot go again. No. But because you have seen where you are going to, you are encouraged. At least I've climbed like two hills in my lifetime. At least. I'll try. I'll try. One in my squad. I don't want to stop. It's not easy. At least I went to a reach of waterfalls. Climb down one. It's not easy. You get to a place. And then you are tired. You don't want to be again. But because where you are going to is the top. You keep pressing. You keep pushing. That's how it is in prayer. That's how it is in prayer. The Bible says, as Daniel set his heart to pray, the answer was released immediately. So there's no delay the answer from the throne room. But he said what? Why the angel was bringing the answer? The Bible says that, you know, the priest of Persia you know, we stood, you know, the angel that was doing the prayer. But Daniel persisted. Daniel continued. Daniel kept pressing, you know, till the reinforcement was sent and the answer came. So that you pray that if it has not physically manifested, does not mean you, know, you should give up praying. Pray, pray, and pray. Pray, pray, and pray. Pray, pray, and what? And pray. In Daniel, you know, the Bible says that you know, the king had a dream. And then he forgot the dream. And then he said that he should call all the wise men, all the astrologers, and all the magicians in the land. The king did not say, come and interpret my dream. Tell me the dream. Ah. 
was not the same bed you took. How will I tell you, GG? And the magicians answered him and said, There is no body on the earth that has asked this thing before. Is that there be a record? At least, farewell, at least he said his own, and then Joseph interpreted. This one, tell me my dream. And then the decree was that all the wise men will be blotted out like snowy street again, they will wipe all of you out. Daniel will understand it. So that is good to have understanding. He just came as a big boy. I said, okay, let me go and meet the king and let's, you know, let's just king of Babylon. It's like you are talking to Putin or somebody that is bigger than that. That's how powerful the king of Babylon was at that time. And then I walked up to him and said, okay, live forever. No more, I'll give you respect. This you have said, I've heard you, but just give me time. And I will go and come back again and give you you know, the dream. That was the advantage Daniel had, and he understood it. Daniel saved not just himself, but also the wise men of Babylon. Why? Because he understood the power of prayer. So he went with his brethren, and then they started praying. And the Bible says that by night, he had understanding. He came into that knowledge. And then, you know, because of that, he was not just the one that was preserved. Even the people that were serving idols were preserved. That's how powerful prayer is. That's how powerful prayer is. Stay on prayer. Stay on it. Stay on it. Pray. 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 Ask the Holy Spirit to quicken you, to strengthen you. Sometimes prayer is easy in an atmosphere of worship. So just find any worship song and just play. And then just, you know, you don't have to start very fast. You know, because you don't have so much energy. It's fine. Take it gradual. You know, just start. You just start praying in tongues. You know, start, you know, charging yourself up. Start charging yourself up. You don't have to rush it. Just play a soft worship song in the background. Just start praying in tongues. Just start praying in tongues. Just start worshiping God. And then you discover that, you know, over a period of time, an energy just swells up within you. And then you mount up with wings. And then you start ascending into the realms of God. This is our reality. I'm not supposed to be beggarly as children of God. This is our reality. Sometimes, you know, it just looks like, okay, everybody is doing, everybody is doing this thing. Sometimes, just an understanding, don't go now. That's all you need to be preserved. But many times, because we think we are intelligent, because we think, you know, we have studied it, and then, okay, looks. That's why the Holy Ghost has been given to us. Sometimes just tell you, don't go. Sometimes it looks like it's very bad. The only goes with them, remain. And they be like, why am I remaining here? Why am I still staying here? But that simple instruction as to remain will preserve you. I see what they to jump out like every other person when there was famine. But God came to him, stay. Prayer opens up, you know, our spiritual senses to be able to download what God has for us. So we shouldn't just see prayer as, you know, Father, thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, as I go, bless my business. You wash out, then you come back. No, set that time to pray. Build yourself in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself. Build yourself. Pray, pray. As I go into the office, you know, we pray in tongues as you are going to the market. You know, just be charging yourself. Don't allow you know for any form of you know lukewarmness around. That's why you know a lot of believers, you know, just have all kind of things in you know, our phones and all of that. 
they want to hear God. He can't walk. He can't walk. Tell the, the young people to listen to secular songs. He can't walk. He can't. He want to hear God. And then, from morning to evening, they are listening to all those people. Uh -huh. And then you are singing, I'm not really like that. I am a Christian. And then sometimes you are asking, why is the tongue still the same way it is? You are not really good. You are standing with yourself. And then you are, what is, what is, what is sweet to you? Is a, what is constant? There was one I watched with the divine the remember. You could see that these guys are propagating the kingdom of darkness. Deep design like uh, all these uh, witches and all of that. And then you go online and people are saying a hey, showing culture. Which culture? And you see people who say they are believers. They are supporting these things. They don't pay tickets to go for this concert. I said you want to rule by life. You can't walk. We are called into a world of our own. We have our own kingdom, the kingdom of light. Don't dwell on those things. You spend three hours, four hours watching a movie. It's good. Watch movies and have issues with it. But take out time within that time and stay on the world. I want you to see that when she's walking, she just plugs her earpiece and then it's, the Bible is reading. That's the way also. You don't have to play it now so that people will hear. Just plug it in your ears. You are walking, find one cool worship song. Just you play it in the background. You'll be having inspiration to walk. That's what means of comes. So. It's good to read books and all of those stuff. Yeah, there's a level to that. But keep yourself, you know, within where that fire would be burning. The place of what? Prayer. It says, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance you know, was altered. They now saw him for who he is. They now saw his reality. And they were like, wow, this is glory. The same thing with Moses too. And he climbed up to the mountain. And then he met with God. Now he says when he came down, his face was shining. The people who didn't have the encounter, you know, they couldn't even look at him. We must pray. We must stay on the word. That is how light comes. We must stay on the word and we must pray. So having said all of this, it's important that you know we press to get light. That is why it is transformation by light. Transformation only comes by light. Transformation only comes by light. As we approach, you know, the perennial, as we approach the coming year, we must seek to have light. Do not take these things lightly, except you have, you know, another alternative. But if God is your only source, if God is the only one you look up to, you must stay until light comes. You must stay with God until light comes. The Bible speaks of David. You know, the Bible talks of King Abulam. The Bible says they came unto him, you know, men who were discontented, men who were, you know, in debt, men who were in distress. But that was not the end of their story. I would say they became the mighty men of David. So that you are not mighty now, it's not because you are not mighty. The angel said to Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. But I was looking at himself. There was nothing that looked like it. That word quickened something in him. That word, thou mighty man of valor. Preaching something in him. Stay on the word. Stay in the place of prayer. In fellowship with God. Fellowship with the virgin. 
those skip service, understanding will come, light will come. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us our heads, even as we pray. Just talk to God this morning. Respond on the word that you have heard. Let the Lord give you grace to study the word. Let the Lord give you grace to stay in the place of prayer. For some of you, the Holy Ghost has been waking you up at a certain time of the night. Then you just find yourself waking up at that time. It is the Holy Ghost that is waking you up for prayer, for fellowship. Let the Lord give you grace to pray, the grace to study the word. It is not easy. Sometimes you sit on the word and then sleep comes. You want to engage in spiritual activities and then sleep comes. Let the Lord give you grace to stay. Grace to stay. So Father, we give you praise, we give you thanks for your word. Thank you for that which you have spoken into our hearts. Yes, Lord, we ask for grace to pray, grace to pray, grace to pray, grace to pray, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay on the word, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we yield ourselves to you again, let the Holy Ghost help us, since they had chance of his word, I receive grace not to miss service, no, I receive grace, to attend every meeting. I receive grace. Yes, to attend every service. Yes. That bring the light will shine into our hearts. The light will shine into our hearts. Holy Ghost, we surrender to you again. Then Lord to give you fresh fire, fresh fire for his word, fresh fire for prayer. Fresh grace for the word, fresh grace for prayer. Fresh grace for the word, fresh grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. And lastly, before I leave, find the house and probably have challenged in your health, please rise to your feet. If you have many form of ailment, you have gone to the hospital and they say this is this and this and that and the things that are wrong with you, please stand to your feet. Please rise to your feet. Please project Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Set his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Just pray to Jesus. Yes. 
Jesus' name. 